welcome one and all to an all new episode of the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet now as has become tradition for the opening of this show i want to send a big old thank you to all the different patrons out there who are making this show possible people like kenneth taylor who is a brand new ten dollar pledger thank you so much kenneth uh, of course, uh, one of the milestones of the patron was to have a place to host the Comic Multiverse podcast for all of you who should want to listen to it on the go and everything like that. That is being worked out currently. I would have had it done earlier. I would have had it done by now. In fact, I wanted to announce that I had it done. But A, I wanted to make it look nice and not like crap. And B, Civil War and Free Comic Book Day may have thrown me off on that, but it is happening. By this time, next week, I will hope to have some good news for you on that. Now, with that out of the way, we can get to the show proper. Uh, Matt, your regular co-host, is away this week. He is busy, but luckily, I was able to wrangle one of my favorite people and one of my favorite prospective co-hosts. That is, of course, Mr. Jason Murphy. Say hi to everybody. Matt's not coming back, Joel. He's dead. I took care of Matt. Yeah, I knew it would end like this one way or another. I'm your co-host now, Joel. (laughs) That's fine. You know, I think we can all live with that, but can you just every so often just go into an Australian accent so, you know, the people, uh, people don't miss Matt too much? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I will do all sorts of horrible stereotype references to dingoes and shrimps placed on Barbies and what have you. A funny accent was really the only thing Matt brought to this show. I think we can all agree. So, I mean, I I think it'll be fine moving on into the future for uh, for TCM Volume 2, The Murphy Years. (laughs) Matt, you poor bastard. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, he knew, too. He knew this was happening. He sent me a tweet earlier where he's like, hey, everyone, you're going to love this new episode of the Comic Multiverse. Why? Because I'm not on it, which basically means it's open season. (laughs) (laughs) so he's just like rich little or or uh you know jeff dunham just like he just makes terrible jokes and funny voices and uh and you just let him do it you i mean i could tell that you just you carry the show really oh oh, i thank you sir yeah and my ego has been stroked just a little bit no you know matt is a good second in command why because he knows his place he knows his place (laughs) i know i don't have to worry about the knife in the dark while i'm sleeping that's why you just give him the look, you raise an eyebrow where he knows, oh, if, if, I, if I open my mouth again, I'm going to have to go back in the box, aren't I? Now, you, you joke about him being dead, but he is from Australia, so, I mean, to get milk, he has to drive down the Fury Road, so yeah, that's going to be rough. Australia, where 95% of Mother Nature is actively trying to kill you. We, we figured this out, like something like seven of the world's ten deadliest spiders all come from Australia. Yeah. Seriously? Mm. Oh Something my God. insane like that. Oh, yeah, totally. No, no, no. I mean, I'm not like an arachnophobe or anything, but the hell with that. Too, too many legs is against God. I'm going to say that right now. It's against Satan, <laughs> yes. too. Just too many legs can fuck right off. <laughs> yes, precisely. Yeah, pretty much. Now, uh, for those of you out there who don't know Jason, I'm sure some of you remember him from the other shows I've done with him. He is a, He's kind of an internet renaissance man. He does a little bit of everything. You may know him from the defunct spill.com. You may know him from his work on Rage Select. Uh, you may know him from his TV work. Yeah, yeah. Jason was on TV on that great uh, No Longer With Us Nat Geo show, Hacking the System. Yep, yep, that's me. Uh, I That's guilty as charged, all of those things. Um, I do a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and, and you still are. You've uh, you've teamed with Brian Brushwood, your host on or co-host on that yet again for a new internet series called Modern Rogue, which is some very entertaining stuff. Thanks. Yeah, the right now I'm working on a lot of things. I uh, uh, I when, once Brian and I didn't get picked up for a second season right away for, of Hacking the System. What's that? I said, which was bullshit that that didn't oh, get Oh, thank you, up. thank you. <laughs> I was yeah, sure to once... push that on all my friends. I'm like, no, watch this. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun, especially since it showed up on uh, uh, on Netflix. And every time I turn on the television, I see my face, and I'm just not like, oh. on Canadian Netflix, which I oh. can say because I am Canadian. But Canadian Netflix always gets shafted for cool I'm shit like that. Sorry, that's a bummer. Yeah. But yeah, if you're within the U.S. and well, I don't know where else, but uh, yeah, turning on the television or putting on Netflix, you can. Uh, it was now trending for several weeks, and that was a little unsettling to just 
you know, pull it up to watch Clone Wars or something, and yep. then there I am looking back at myself. But uh, yeah, once we got the word that that uh, didn't get picked up for a second season, we decided to go ahead and just start doing it ourselves. And so we've got it in little bite-sized chunks now rather than mm -hmm. 20 to 30-minute episodes. And we're doing the Modern Rogue on YouTube. We're getting a lot of good traffic. It's uh, kind of a spinoff, if you will, a sister program to Brian's uh, eight-year ru uh, run on uh, Scam School, which is still going as well. Brian Brushwood, for those of you who don't know, is a professional magician and best friend and uh, frequent collaborator of Jason Murphy here. Yeah, yeah, I've known Brian for a long time, probably uh, almost 20 years now, and uh, he, uh, he, his scam school started off with him, uh, you know, how to do, how to scam a free drink in a bar, mm -hmm. and then uh, several years ago, uh, we started getting together to pitch television shows, one of them got picked up, and he, that's how uh, Hacking the System came to be. Um, but now, yeah, we're doing the Modern Row. We've got 12 episodes out. They come out every Thursday. Uh, you can see them on YouTube. Uh, we do lots of stuff like uh, we've done prison weaponry oh, and yes. how to make your own smoke bombs and how to kind of quote unquote hack your brain into hallucinating without any sort of additives you've, you've inhaled booze I know a video I was sharing around with everyone is how to get the most out of Taco Bell how to scam the Taco Bell man yes exactly so it's 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 all uh, it, it's all over the place but all fitting within our brand of being uh, just roguish and having knowledge that other people don't have and kind of getting away with stuff so yeah I've got that every week um, I uh, I occasionally uh, still appear on RageSelect.com on their video game Let's Plays. Uh, I'm actually recording uh, Uncharted 4, uh, uh, the day of release, which as of this recording anyway is tomorrow. Uh, Jeff and I are going to do a couple of episodes of that. N Nathan uh, motherfucking Drake is back yeah. again. Oh, man, one of my favorite characters. Do, do, do you think he's going to shoot some brown people? Because I know I think, in all the other games he's shot a lot of brown people. I think he's going to shoot a lot of people full stop. <laughs> The guy's a psychopath. It's it's his last it's his last installment, possibly before he rides off in the sunset. So he'll yeah. have to kill even more people than before. Exactly, he's got to top them. He, he's yeah, he has to go out on a high note before he retires or whatever. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be recording that, and uh, I'm uh, working on uh, an audio drama right mm -hmm. now. That's uh, kind of been working on for a while because it's turned out to be. As I should have suspected, way more work than I anticipated. But they don't tell you about that. They don't tell you audio dramas are a lot of work. You think you just talk into the mic and that's it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, it was easy enough to write, but uh, I have 40 spoken parts about Ooh. in the uh, in the audio drama. Uh, so that's 40 actors and scheduling them, and then they show up. And <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me you voice all of them. You do all oh. 40 parts. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm. <laughs> you wanted those funny accents. They're coming. Uh, <laughs> that, that, no, that's the, the whole uh, thing. Yeah, <laughs> but that's uh, yeah, working on that, and then working on. Uh, oh, uh, in February, I published my first novel on. On uh, well, I didn't publish it. Uh, a small press publisher called Sinister Grin Press came out with it. The novel is called The Black Goat Motorcycle Club. It's uh, it's basically a grindhouse movie. It's it's a, uh, it's a fucking metal name. I can tell you that much for sure. It is a uh, kind of a ridiculously violent, uh, gory action horror story. Uh, I wanted to write just like a kind of a just a razor of a novel, just mm. something really sharp and quick and deadly, and uh, you know, it's really fast paced. And that's what I did, and it got published. Yay! So yeah. now I have to do another one, and I'm working on editing the second novel now, which is um, a much more deliberate, creepy. Um, uh, whereas, whereas the first one was like Rio Bravo, right. uh, a siege, it was a siege movie, basically. A Assault on uh, Precinct Thirteen. That's the vibe I got from a lot of it. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's you know, small group of people uh, overwhelmed by massive numbers of bad guys. The one I'm working on now is much slower, much more in the vein of like Nightmare on Elm Street with ah. just, just boogeyman and stuff like that. Will, so. will this one also have bikers in it? Mm. I didn't think if there are any. No, no, there's not. Damn. Although there will be a sequel to Black Goat Motorcycle Club. Uh, uh. I started plotting that out, and I probably ought to get on writing it pretty soon. But, but Black Goat to Electric Goataloo? Exactly. Yeah, that's you. Did you? Did I tell you that already? Did I send you, you the, the script? You may have. I, I think someone may have leaked that information. Someone close to the Murphy camp. God, you have. You have the best sources. Um, <laughs> I got, got my uh, connections, man. Got my fingers in many pies. Yeah, exactly. Now I've got uh, uh, no. So the Black Goat Motorcycle Club is available on Amazon. Check it out. That mm. one is like sixty-five thousand words. 
which is just a you know it's a it's novel length, but it's a short novel. And my new one is it's looking like it's going to be like a hundred and twenty thousand words. Oh wow! Uh, so almost twice. <laughs> yeah. So. Did uh, did you do much research into bikers and biker culture when you wrote uh, when you wrote the first one there? I, I always uh, meant to ask no. you that. No, I didn't. Uh, I really didn't. Uh, I, I there were times when I thought I should have, but it really wasn't that kind of novel where I wasn't going to get into the ephemeral and the nuts and bolts. And plus, the bikers are really just kind of an unstoppable force. They're a uh, just a, a crazy, mysterious thing. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to strip away any of the mystery or anything like that. Right. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of uh, left everything. Everything was set aside in place of the pace. Right. You know, I re- really wanted it to be just brutally paced. Totally. You know, maybe it's my own inner white trash coming out, but I've always been fascinated by bikers and biker cultures. I watched all of Sons of Anarchy. I watched, you know, like all those gangland episodes when they do like uh, biographies on the Hells Angels and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this is so cool. I could totally be. No, I couldn't because I'm, <laughs> I'm a total wimp. But, you know, maybe I could ride a motorcycle once. You know, maybe I'm a little bite curious is what I <laughs> <laughs> yeah I uh, the only thing I really did to research it was uh, watch werewolves on wheels ah <laughs> which is a, classic schlock uh, it's goofy goofy I mean this th- uh, that movie really doesn't have much in common with my novel aside from the fact that it's you know bikers who turn into werewolves um, everything else is Totally different. <laughs> you know, it, but, it's, uh, it's too funny you should say that. I'm guessing you haven't been keeping up with the new Green Arrow currently from ben, uh, Benjamin Percy. That book has werewolf bikers in it. Does it really? It seriously does. They're called the Horde Motorcycle Club. Or no, they're called the Berserker Motorcycle Club. Oh, I have to get uh, get back on that. Uh, I haven't read uh, the new Green Arrow yet. Uh, it's, it, it's a cool run. I like what Percy's doing with the book. He let him have his politics back, and he's going to continue to have that moving on to the future. That's what I heard. I am going to grab that. I've I've drifted away from a lot of the DC comics because, uh, you know, when New 52 came out, I was reading all of them. Oh, yeah, me too. Like, literally every one of them. And I was spending a lot of money. And one by one, they dropped off uh, to where now I'm reading Batman and Batgirl. And that's it. Uh, but now with... Uh, Rebirth. Rebirth, yes. I wanted to say Resurgence. It was combining the portmanteau, portmanteau of Rebirth and Divergence. And, and Convergence, uh, which was another thing they had. And Convergence, yeah. So, Man, what a uh, nothing that ended up being. Yeah, I've wanted to pick some of them back up and learning that Ollie, as I read the other day, that Ollie was getting his politics back, I was like, oh, okay, so he's going to be more Robin Hood. Oh, I, I, yes, he I is. want to get back to that. I want to read that. Uh, Green Arrow has always been my favorite hero, and I felt he was being so underutilized for so long by not taking political stances. Literally in the first arc, if you need any more selling on it, he deals with drone warfare in Ferguson in his first arc. Nice. That sounds like uh, that sounds like something I just read. I just read the trade for Captain America, Sam Wilson, Captain America. Oh yes, yes, yes. And that is very political, unabashedly so. Where Sam That's comes true. out and just lays his beliefs on on the line and puts them up front. And uh, yeah, it's uh, how I, cool I really is Nick Spencer, it. right? Or is, or is that still the remember stuff? It's Nick Spencer who took nope. over later. It's it's Rick Spencer or, or Nick Spencer, yeah. Uh, Nick Spencer is the one who, you know, brought back Cap Wolf and mm-hmm, sure had him did. fight the Serpent Society and the Sons of the Serpents. And uh, it's 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 funny because he tackles real world problems, but balances it with the silliness of like Grunewald era mm-hmm. Captain America. And I, I think it's amazing too is that Nick Spencer is going to get to write both now. He's going to get to continue writing Sam in a book, and he's going to get to write Steve in a book too. Yeah, I just read the uh, free comic book day copy of Captain America, mm-hmm. which I'm going to pick up when that comes out. Actually, where I'm, Cap- I'm glad you said that because I was going to say, did you make it out for free comic book day this uh, this year, and what did you pick up? I did. I was afraid that I wasn't going to make it, um, that I wasn't going to make it to a free comic book day because I was busy. I was actually playing Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, <laughs> so, you, you lucky uh, bastard! I've always wanted to start one of those games up, but I could never find people. Yeah, it, it can be a little tough. It's also tough, you know, scheduling a bunch of adults oh, yeah. to play it. An uh, adult play date is what you're essentially doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we played that for a couple of hours, and I rushed over to Rogue's Gallery Comics and Games in Round Rock, Texas. Uh, Owned by Randy my, Lander. 
Yep, one of my oldest friends uh, runs that place, uh, and I've been going there since it opened. Uh, got a long time ago. Uh, but I did, I made it, uh, some of the stuff was sold out, but I really, I hadn't read up on all the things that were coming out. So I ended up just grabbing whatever looked good, uh, see if I can remember everything. I yeah, grabbed yeah, yeah. Bob's Burgers. I grabbed uh, that too. Yeah, I grabbed uh, uh, Mark Waid's Archie, which I've been meaning to check out to figure this Same is here. I grabbed a copy out. for my dad because my dad grew up reading Archie. So I'm like, hey, man, here, friggin' the guy who wrote Kingdom Come is writing Archie now. How yeah, right. <laughs> I hear it's great. Uh, I haven't too? had a chance to read that one yet. I got the Captain America one. Mm -hmm. I got the Civil War free comic book day. And, uh, oh, Serenity. I got the oh, Dark nice. uh, Serenity one, which I, I read the, uh, the Chris Robertson penned. Uh, Serenity story in there. It's also got a, a Hellboy and an Alien story in there. It was good. I oh, liked yeah. it. I picked up all those same books you did, and I also picked up the Bruce Lee one, too. Oh, I didn't know there was one. There was a Bruce Lee one they did. Oh, who's publishing that? Oh, God. I have. It's over on the other table. I can't pick it out. But it's like a little autobiography piece, unlike the real, of the real Bruce Lee. It was cool. That sounds... That sounds interesting. I mean, uh, it makes me think of, you know, the bad blue water stuff like Hillary Clinton. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. right? Here's the Joe Biden story. Like, oh, yeah, I, I don't care. I, but I, Bruce Lee. OK, yeah, I'll check that dude out. Dude lived an interesting life that you could make into a good story. Oh, yeah. Did you ever see Dragon, mm. the movie that was made back in the 90s? I did. Yes. Yeah, you know, autobiographical. I don't know how many liberties they took, but yeah, he was just shrouded in mystery, you know, totally. and, and even his death is mysterious to this. Yeah. Time. Yeah. I mean, I heard all sorts of uh, reasons why he died. And one of them was that, yeah, he was uh, uh, he was so fit that once his body ran out of fat to burn, it attacked his brain. And I was like, oh, my God. See, that's why I don't go to the gym. <laughs> that's real. why I don't go to the gym. It's no, a fuck that. Measure. Yeah, it's like you can be too healthy. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to hit Taco Bell and make sure that uh, my body doesn't uh, kill me. Absolutely. I, d uh, I was going to say, well, we will eventually talk about what we read this week so we can cover all sure. that other stuff there. But uh, we, we, we are a new show podcast, so I figure we can jump into some of the stuff that happened this week. And there was a fair amount, actually. I'm glad you came on a big news week. I would really hate it if it's just like, hey, Jason, we got nothing to talk about. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So what do you want to kick it off with? Uh, well, hey, man, did you see that they're going to be making a freaking Iron Legion standalone move? Oh, no, wait, no, it's not. Those are the new Power Rangers costumes. Oh. Oops. <laughs> I saw those. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hate for them. Uh, and a lot they're, of, I, they're not the worst, but they are literally, if you told me, hey, they're making a new trendy Power Rangers movie for 2016, that's what comes into my mind. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm one of those guys who really... Just doesn't care. I. That's fair. No, Jason is older than me, in case you're wondering, everyone. He did not grow up with this the same way I grew up with it. Yeah, most of my friends actually are younger, but like when the Power Rangers craze hit the United States, uh, you started seeing all of the toys, and I don't know mm -hmm. if you recall, it was like Cabbage Patch Kids. People were going berserk. Oh, God, over yeah. them. I was one of those kids. Yeah, yeah, and at the time, I was working at a KB Toys, and I had no idea what any of these people were talking about. Uh, and I was like, uh, it was my first job. I was 18, and Power Rangers were showing up, and, uh, and then I realized that it was a TV show and that it, that it had made its way over to America, and I was like, oh, okay, well, huh. Um, sure, whatever. That's that's yeah, that's fine. You that's cool. Uh, give me give me my uh, my Toy Biz X Men toys. Yeah, and, uh, there you go. The the Power of the Force toys. Yeah, see, you know, it's a, you want to know what's hilarious about the Power Rangers as a brand and as a thing. Disney owned the rights to them for a hot minute. They bought them off Saban and had them through some of like the worst years that they owned it, and then they sold it back to Saban, and now Saban is making the movie. That's weird. That is weird that Disney sold something back, and I'm sure they're kicking themselves now where they're like, man, between Star Wars and Marvel, we could have had a Power Rangers cinematic universe. <laughs> and yeah, another that would have been fortune. really, really interesting. I can't believe that they went ahead and uh, just gave it up. I guess they just didn't know what to do with it. But that's the thing that I've learned about, uh, uh, you know, about like, uh, like one of my good friends is Matt Frank, mm. right? And Matt of uh, the new is Godzilla a kaiju stuff. expert. He draws a lot of Transformers and Godzilla comics and what have you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he loves robots and all things kaiju and kaijin and things like that. Uh, things that I, I, and I apologize if I butcher it, but uh, they're all very particular. Oh yes, they are about how you adapt those things. Totally. 
and uh, and that's uh, you know that's just the people who are getting things kind of secondhand as it's imported over to Japan. Oh, yeah. uh, when you take it back to its uh, to its source material, then they're even more particular, and it's just things that that we don't understand. I was I was talking to Matt about something, and he was showing me some designs for some kaiju stuff that he was working on, and or, or some kaijin stuff that he was working on. Excuse me, which are like. Um, uh, like you know, little monster men, as I understand it. And again, mm. forgive me if I'm screwing it up. <laughs> so uh, sorry if he doesn't get the nomenclature correct. Yeah, yeah, like you know, like uh, like guys in suits, kind of like uh, uh, Spider Man. You know, um, I l- love that guy. We are big fans of that on this show, the Japanese Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I, and I was talking to him, and I said, you know, uh, you know, you should, uh, oh, you should have, make this guy a kaiju and all that. And he's like, and Matt was like, no, 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 you don't mix those together. <laughs> And I was like, it's, it's not peanut butter and chocolate. Yeah, I was like, really? It's the same thing. What are you talking about? And he explained it to me, and I said, oh, I get it. Okay, it's like putting gremlins in a Friday the 13th movie. You know, it's, mm. and he said, yes, yes. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm going to step away and not pretend to know anything about this. And, and then he called you a gaijin and threw a smoke bomb down and disappeared. Yeah, he disemboweled me. <laughs> <laughs> you have dishonored me and my religion of the giant right. monsters. Yeah, I, I like to think that anytime I open my mouth, Matt just kind of like on stuff like that. Matt just kind of rolls my rolls his eyes, and then I just say something a little bit more absurd and a mm. little bit more absurd until his nose starts bleeding, and then he realizes I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> What's, what, what I find interesting about this whole Power Rangers thing is that it really uh, tr- uh, translates to me, at least, or it really seems to say, hey, guys, we absolutely exhausted all the 80s nostalgia with our Transformers and gem movies. Time to move on to 90s nostalgia. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's uh, And I think what's going to happen, there was a, there was a theorist, if you'll allow me to get a little you know, marginally Please intelligent do. about Please things. Please do. There was this uh, cultural theorist who several years ago uh, said that, yes, uh, pop culture and just culture as a whole, fashion, music, etc., will start repeating itself, but it will start doing so in smaller and smaller increments. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see until basically it it just implodes. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I don't remember what he meant by implodes. Uh, When I read it as a kid, I thought, oh, does... He mean the collapse of civilization. <laughs> what does he mean there? But I, I, and and maybe it's just time passing quickly as I'm getting older or something. But I think we've seen that. I think we've seen a lot of like '70s nostalgia, '80s nostalgia, mm-hmm. just coming more and more rapidly. And now oh, yes. we're seeing you know '90s. Uh, we've already been seeing. Uh, uh, 90s stuff, just like rapidly re- repackaged and regurgitated. Hey man, how about that Jolt Cola? Are you excited to get a nice cool glass of Jolt Cola? Oh yeah, Jolt Cola, Ecto Cooler is back. Man, you know. if, if nothing else justifies the existence of a new Ghostbusters movie, it's that I might actually be able to get my hands on some Ecto Cooler again. I'm like, you know what? The movie, whatever man, Ecto Cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'll be yeah, stocking uh, up on that shit. I'll have a doomsday bunker filled with ecto cooler. It's like no, they might never make another Ghostbusters again after this. I loved ecto cooler, and mm-hmm. I need to go out and get some. <laughs> but uh, before it's too late, yeah, early. yeah. The uh, um, uh, the the Power Ranger suits, though, I don't know. I think they look cool. They look all right, but again, it's the big glowing chess piece that gets me where it's like you you just ripped off the Iron Man costume. It's like, okay, oh, it, yeah. We got yeah, Iron Heroes, shiny. what do we do? I, I can see that. It's very much Stark tech. If, you know? if they start flying around with repulsors, I'm going to be pissed. Or maybe excited. I don't know. Maybe that's awesome. I don't know anymore. <laughs> what's what's interesting too and what I kind of noted and what will be interesting moving into the future is that unlike stuff like Transformers and Gem and Ninja Turtles the funny thing about Power Rangers and the thing I a lot of people don't notice is that unlike all those things I just mentioned Power Rangers never went away for a meaningful amount of time it's still on right now in new episodes it airs in uh, airs on Nickelodeon now but it never stopped yeah, yeah, that's that's funny because I didn't realize that until several years ago. I just thought, oh, this is still happening. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yep. cool, right? And I used to hate it. I honestly used to hate it because I didn't understand it. And that's that's when I I think I first realized that I was starting to 
like my my tastes were maturing or something like that. Oh, because yeah. I just thought, what is this moronic nonsense? Oh, I've been there. What about X Men toys? For real, <laughs> bring know? me the and things I, was, I like. I was indignant, you know, and now I'm just kind of like, all right, yeah, that's cool, whatever. <laughs> Totally. So, uh, I mean, I guess moving on from there, uh, the other big piece of news that was burning up the internet this week, uh, a, uh, Ben dropping his ass Affleck has apparently been announced as the brand new executive producer on the upcoming Justice League movie. This on the heels of the news that he will almost certainly be directing a solo Batman movie on his own now. Really looking forward to that. Me too. Uh, I... I think uh, Ben Affleck is a fantastic director. He's a powerhouse of a director. Gone, baby, gone. Argo, the man reinvented himself and totally changed my opinion of him in just a couple movies. Yeah, exactly. And I think he is going to bring a lot to the table, especially since he's working with the writer of Argo. His Terrio. name is Gabe. Yeah, Terrio. Uh, I, I am really excited about this. Now, I have been following all of the drama that's associated around Ooh, it. Yes, a lot of that's rumored. A lot of that's sure. rumored, you know, and we'll, we'll probably never know the truth of it. Until uh, many knows. years later. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, all that rumor aside, is if, you know, they were muscling out uh, Zack Snyder or whatever, I, I, don't, I don't care. All I care about is, okay, Affleck's got a good eye for stuff like that. He's an executive producer on Justice League. I trust him. He's made three, the three movies, he's three for three. Oh, yeah. The three movies that he's been in charge of are fantastic. And they're not just like popcorn or anything like that. It's not like Drive Angry, which I love, yeah, but, is off, off, but it's trash. Oh, yeah, know? it is. These are legitimately damned good films. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, the, the other thing, too, about the, about the whole Affleck thing, I know... Uh, they were kind of running with this thing, and like you said, could be rumor mill, could be anything, is that apparently Affleck was very disappointed and very upset with the reception uh, a lot of people had for Batman v Superman, especially because this isn't his first rodeo with people being upset about a superhero movie he was in, Daredevil anybody, and that may have been one of the deciding factors when it's like, look, I want more control over this now, I would like to be executive producer, please. Now, Jason, you probably know movies better than I do. I'm going to say, and you've been involved in many movies yourself there. What exactly, for the people out there who don't know, does an executive producer do? What power do they wield? Uh, it, it is a, a broad variety of things. Uh, it could be just creative oversight to say, okay, we're going to hire this makeup guy, and we're, uh, I want you to use this actor for this. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a pretty broad topic, honestly, and it there's is. not an easy way to say it. Uh, they can be showrunners. They can just be head writers. It can be maybe nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he just said, all right, as part of this renegotiated deal, I want an executive producer credit. Just That's because it. Because I want it. Yeah. 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 It could be any number of things. So it, it's hard to say what his is going to be. We just, we really don't know. Uh, it, because you know, executive producer, it, producer credits as a whole are just really nebulous. And oh, yes. a lot of times they'll just give them to people who contribute money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you give enough it, money, you're a producer. Yeah, it's so there there's a lot of things. It could be he might have uh he might have complete creative control, he might have none at all, he might not even want any. Mm. There's really no way to know right now. Yeah, and I mean obviously of course everyone's going over this news with a fine tooth comb. Because this itself comes not long after the news that the Flash director departed, and there yeah. was and there was a lot of uncertainty where it's like, oh, is well, is James Wan gonna stay on Aquaman now because they lo lost a Wonder Woman director, they lost a Flash director? What is happening? <laughs> well, let's let's be clear. I know that the court of public opinion has is the way it is uh, is the way it is. Yeah, and it's you know blown up against uh, BVS. That said, the movie made a fuck ton of money oh yeah which as it was always bound to do yeah yeah and so really at the end of the day that's the main thing that matters oh of course uh and i'm not i i, I didn't see the movie i haven't seen it yet you, you uh, didn't so I, see man of steel until long after the fact if i remember that's true and i actually really liked man of you steel. did you were one of the few people who were quite positive i remember you and brian brushwood talking about it yeah yeah, I had some problems with it. I did, but I really enjoyed it. Now, Batman vs. Superman, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'd like to. I just haven't. I was actually checking times for it earlier today mm. because I need to check it out. I just don't go to the movies very often anymore. I guess not. Uh, have, you, have you seen Civil War yet? I did. I did. I saw a, a press screening of Civil War. Oh, lucky. 
uh, that uh, a buddy of mine got into. Uh, I saw it just a couple of days before it was released, and uh, it's phenomenal. I was, you know? was going to say, how Oakwood hard was your erection at certain oh, points? Oh, man. It, it, was, it was just a, it, it was incredible. I was like, m- my erection was so big that there were speeder bikes flying around it. It was <laughs> crazy. Oh, Ewoks were trying to live in my dong. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, it, it, the hype is real. It was a great movie. It was a great movie. It was, I don't want to say it was flawless, but I'm still just on such a high from enjoying it that I can't really pick out anything that bothered me. My friend Tony, uh, whom you know. Uh, As the Tony, former co-host 3000. Yep. Uh, Tony said, oh, do you think they shoehorned Spider-Man in there? And I was just like, I don't care. Fuck you. Shut up. C- c- can you really shoehorn Spider-Man in any way? <laughs> yeah, it just works so well. But l- l- I don't know. let me ask you this because I know you're a huge Spider Man fan. I would say him and yeah. Iron Fist are probably top tier for you. How great is it to finally have a Spider Man, to have a Peter Parker who talks with a Queen accent, who actually talks like he's from New York? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I would have liked to hear it a little bit more. Uh, I would have liked for it to have been really pronounced, but I realize that's not terribly practical. No, not really. And it would throw a lot of people who don't realize it's like no this kid's from queens forest hills specifically and mm-hmm. has lived there his entire life uh and I, I love it when they make, an accent yeah yeah i love it when they make those jokes in the comic books uh like where luke cage makes a comment about him being white mm-hmm. and this is when he didn't know his his you know his secret identity and spider-man yeah. says how do you know i'm white <laughs> he's like what are you what seriously <laughs> And, and, and that joke gets even funnier now when we see the explosion of Miles Morales in the universe. That joke gets even funnier. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, I mean, I wish he would have had a, a like a really pronounced uh, Queen's accent. But, uh, you know, I, I get it. It's That that would throw a lot of people, I think. I, 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 without spoiling too much, how great is it? Because, you know, again, what these movies have done is what the comics have always done, and they have made New York the center of the Marvel Universe. So when Cap is actually able to pick out Spider-Man's accent. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, it was a good scene. It was a good scene. I don't, I don't want to say much, but I liked it. <laughs> uh, if Matt had been here, we would probably have had a bigger spoiler cast, and we probably will. And I know I roped you in for a show, so I won't rope you in for a spoiler cast, too. So with that, I'll just move on to the next piece. And that is, well, to talk about in no, you know, no friggin' duh news. I can't believe this one's been making the rounds. I can't believe people tweeted this one at me. And that is, could the next X-Men movie be set in the 90s? Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you have regular pattern recognition? First Class was in the 60s. Days of Future Past was in the 70s. This new one is going to be in the 80s. Hmm, I wonder where the next one is going to be. I just can't wait for Brian Singer, or whoever ends up directing it, just screaming on set, we need more pouches! Mm. More pouches! And somewhere just Rob Liefeld cries, just, you know, manly tears, wherever he is. Finally, they brought my vision to life, he'll say. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, they're probably going to integrate Deadpool into it. As they have to. You can't do a 90s X-Men movie and not have Deadpool in it. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. So I am, uh, I haven't seen uh, uh, Days uh, days of Future Past, uh, uh, X-Men Apocalypse. Yes. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. A bunch of my friends got out of a, a bunch of my friends got out of a a press screening of Uh, it today. The the embargo just broke tonight, actually. Oh, did it? The reviews have just gone up. I didn't read any before we started, but the reviews have just gone up tonight. Uh, The uh, hot take on it, as it were, is not good, actually. Is it not? See, I didn't read those yet. My feeling moving into it is like, okay, so after Batman v Superman went one way, Civil War went the other way, I am confident in saying Apocalypse will probably be right down the middle, I assume. Yeah, right now there are 13 on Rotten Tomatoes. Now take that uh, for what it is. Rotten Tomatoes should always be taken with a grain of salt because of its metrics, but... Uh, forty-five percent rotten. Huh. Uh, thirteen fresh, sixteen rotten. I think I think having it released so close to Civil War was probably a bad idea. Yeah, they sh- that's, that's they a good point. They should have given it some time to breathe in between. Then again, they're confident about it. You know, the embargo's up right now, yeah, and very early. Yeah, very early. So I think they're confident that they've got a good movie here. I mean, that's the only reason uh, that they would 
let people review it yeah. as quickly as they have. I, I, uh, and I, looking I, at the trailers, I think it looks really cool. Uh, of course, I'm an easy mark for like Nightcrawler. Oh, <laughs> so. absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I quite enjoyed the last two ones. I I think uh, First Class is probably the closest they've come to really capturing the comics, even right down to the costume. Uh, Future Past was fun, even if it did feel like the movies have started to learn the bad lessons from comic books now. It's like, oh, you mean we can just retcon shit? You mean anything we nah. don't like? We can just yep. change it all and say it didn't happen? We should do this all the time now. Yeah, the timeline at this point really doesn't make any sense. So much to the point that Deadpool can make a hilarious joke about it in his own movie. Oh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's some good stuff. Uh, I mean, uh, like I, I'm excited for Apocalypse. It should be okay. Like I said, it should be down the middle. But what I really want, because it feels like the last three have just been retcon movies, where it's like, okay, well, we need to get this movie out of the way so we can put all the toys back in the box and put them the way we want them, so we can start making movies. And it's like, okay, you're three in now. Are you going to start making movies now, or are you just going to make whole movies to put stuff back in order? Yeah, it you. You say toys in the box and use it in a metaphorical sense, but that kind of upsets me that we don't have any literal toys. <laughs> and I, you know why that is? I'm sure you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know all of the 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 pissing contest between I, Marvel and Fox. I, I, I do a legal show for another channel called NerdSync. Uh, it's entitled Super Suits, and to try and tie this together, I want to finally do an actual piece on the action figure lawsuits and the pissing and why you never will be able to get action figures connected to these new movies. Oh, that's just so, oh, it's so heartbreaking because they've got some really cool designs, especially in this one. I'd love to have, you know, some, the Archangel stuff and the mm -hmm. Apocalypse and Nightcrawler and all I, that. I'm glad they're finally wearing costumes, even though it didn't look like they were going to at first. It looked like they were going back to black leather battle armor. I know. Yeah, it did, and I'm glad to see that uh, some of the later shots came out. I'm like, oh, okay, good. You're you're really embracing the costumes, not not entirely, but you're getting there. Uh, so I I mean, really, after Captain America and the first Avengers movie, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, really. Just do it. it should, Nobody's going to care. It should be a blank check. People will accept a man with an ant helmet. People will accept a man draped in the American flag. Yeah, Spider Man. People will accept Deadpool. People will accept guys who don't even have mouths. Yeah, do it. It's fine. Uh, so maybe they're finally getting that. I hope so. A another thing I hope they overcome, and I'm sure you've noticed this too, is they clearly write these X-Men movies around whichever actor or actress is hottest at the time. So when Hugh Jackman was the big thing, okay, all three of these need to be written around Hugh Jackman. Yeah. And then when, like, uh, for, for what is it, for uh, for First Class, oh, man, Fastbender's going to be huge, write everything around him. And then for the next one, it's like, oh, wow, Jennifer Lawrence is going to be huge, write it all around her and now it's yeah. for this new one too it's also going to be around her yeah my only misgiving about that is from a very stand boy or fanboy point of view oh trust me you're on the right show for that yeah that uh i like jennifer lawrence a lot i think she's a great actress but that's not mystique no and yeah. for and for like the trailer i'm sure you saw the last one where she's like oh i'm the leader of the x-men now i'm like bullshit mystique yeah, right. is leader of the you were never a member yeah it's uh, you know briefly you know, brief periods throughout history. Here and there, a, but it's like, I would member. never call her a member. Uh, yeah, it, you, I think you're, it's, you're it's... You're a member when you get your own room and you get your own stuff in the fridge. Mystique had none of her own stuff in the fridge. Yeah, and I was I was talking to someone, they're like, oh, yeah, well, what, you don't like Mystique? And I'm like, okay, that's not Mystique. Like, well, what's, what's, what's Mystique like, really? I said, she's fucking crazy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and dangerous. That's not what I'm getting here at all. And again, I still like uh, Jennifer Lawrence and her performance, oh, but... Yeah. I would love to see the hat basket full of squirrels version of Mystique, you know? I, I wonder, too, because obviously we're going to have Nightcrawler and Mystique in the same movie now for the first time since X-Men 2. Do you think they're going to ever try and touch on that thing where it's like, hey, I'm your mom? Uh, I wonder, because they're already, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but they're already starting to kind of dance around that with other characters. Uh. And plus, it's like, uh, you X Men's got to be really careful because it's going to start. Uh, the timelines are already starting to get mm -hmm. muddy, and it's going to start getting really impenetrable oh, yes. to regular audiences. Because, like, you know, I've had someone go, 
uh, hey, he meant, uh, Deadpool mentioned Cable at the end, you know, in this one moment. And blo- mm-hmm. sorry, spoiler shit, sorry. It's, it's not really a spoiler. Anyone who listens to this show has seen the movie. Okay, okay, good. So, yeah, you know, Deadpool mentions Cable in, in, a port, uh, in part of the movie, and someone was like, oh, hey, who's Cable? And I'm like, oh, boy, how oh, much time shit. do you have? Okay, yeah, let me do something easier, like so uh, let's talk about and... Hawkman's origin. Oh, you know, God, so. dude, there's right there friggin' Hawkman. Uh, man, you are so a perfect guest for this show. We are always ripping on Hawkman's complicated origin story. Yeah, it's like Hawkman, you know, Power Girl. It's, it's just like... And much of the X Men, I think the X Men might be like the worst of the bunch. Mm. But uh, you know, you get the so, cable. So you see and Crisis just... and Retcon and Strife and Nineties and uh, Legacy Virus. Oh God, and... Strife and yeah, just the the Escani and mm. just all of that shit. See, we joke about Strife, but Strife. If they announce, you know, Strife's going to be the villain for Deadpool two, we're like, okay, can't wait to see what they do with them. Yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, shit, I didn't think I'd enjoy Ajax as much as I did, and friggin' Ajax was a goddamn henchman, you know, originally. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, that was crazy. They, I was waiting to, I was waiting for them to pull out, like, Garrison Kane or Gideon or some weird I, shit. I was waiting for Dr., uh, what is it, Dr. Kilbrew or whatever. They just kind of fused uh, Ajax and Kilbrew together. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which I they, guess you kind of have to do, because they're not really interesting characters. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of throwaway stuff. I just wish they had been more overt about it being Weapon X, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Or or even just, you know, Canadian it up a bit and be like, oh, yeah, it's Department K. Yeah, that's what it is. Right, you know, something like that. Mention mention Alpha Flight, you know, bring... Oh, uh, uh, have a maggot cameo. That would have been cool. Dude, 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 <laughs> dude. Deadpool 3, Deadpool's road trip back to Canada to meet up with Alpha Flight. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, all of the puck jokes. That's going to be so fun. So many good... It's like, we joke, but that's a million dollar idea right there. Like, in the hands of the people who wrote that Deadpool movie, I bet Alpha Flight could be everyone's favorite new characters. Oh, yeah, exactly. I uh, Alpha Flight uh, still needs some love, you know? Let's... Uh, Let's get it done right. It, it hasn't been, like, uh, I know they're doing it right now, but it's not really Alpha Flight. It's they, Alpha they, Flight. They named like, a space station after them. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, that doesn't count. Sorry. I, I remember when I first picked that up post-Secret Wars, it's like, really? Captain Marvel space station is called Alpha Flight? What? Yeah, it was like, that's uh, it's kind of a bait and switch, you, you know? know? <laughs> you know what that should be? The real Alpha Flight should try and sue her for copyright infringement and be like, hey, you're illegally using our name and we hired She-Hulk to be our lawyer. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> so, of course, Captain Marvel would turn around and hire Daredevil, and there's there's your story right there. There you go. <laughs> just, a, just a whole mini-series of people in the courtroom. You right. Charles <laughs> Soule to write it. Yeah, exactly. He uh, He's on Daredevil right now, so. He sure is. Uh... Now, uh, did we have one more story? Oh, yeah, we had a couple more stories we can breeze through. So, again, we, we were deep in the Marvel movie conversation, and uh, apparently the Russo brothers, when they were making the rounds this week for, you know, press uh, for Civil War, uh, someone breached the question, as they often do, about the possibility of a Black Widow movie. And surprisingly, they were more positive about it and less dismissive than they have been in the past, and they said, you know, it's really only a matter of time and scheduling, and they both think it would be really cool. Obviously, they have a great affinity for the character. She had a great arc in Winter Soldier. She has a great arc here in Civil War. They didn't say they would do it. And uh, and we're back after that, after a slight bit of technical trouble there. Apparently no one wanted us to talk about this very hard-hitting issue, Jason, about whether or not yeah. Black Widow should have her own movie. Yeah, it's the, the, the MRA guys are trying to keep uh, that from happening. Damn I, yeah. you guys. <laughs> Damn you all to hell and your red pills. Yeah, I am actually very excited about the possibility of this. It's kind of a no-brainer, and it's something that they really can't, uh, they can't dodge it. No, you they know, can't. The, the sentiment is such that they have to do it. It's like, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but all of the original Avengers in the first movie have had their own films. Ooh, Legend of Zelda just happened. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, they, uh, they all have. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Even Black Hulk Widow never had another movie, had a movie. Yeah, you've had Black Widow in uh, how many films now? She's been in, like, a couple of Iron Man. All and the, the Avengers, Avengers and at least two Captain Americas. Yeah, so give her her own damn movie. She's an interesting character. Uh, Scarlett Johansson has a stranglehold on her, and... The way people reacted to a strong female lead in, in the form of Rey and the Force Awakens, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a you've got to do it. If, 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 Maleficent, if Maleficent can make money hand over fist and be a surprise hit, why not Black Widow? Oh, precisely. Yeah. And I mean, she is a character who has been in several successful films in very prominent roles. So totally. just just do it. But just do it. My, my thing is, if they do do it, I would kind of hope the Russos would be involved in one way or another, because they really seem to get Natasha Romanoff in the way other people just don't. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Whedon uh, did as well, but you oh, know, yeah. Whedon has uh, recently said that uh, he's uh, he he wasn't happy with his performance. He, he burnt out, and, which I mean, obviously that would yeah. happen. Where it's like, hey, you made the biggest movie ever. Now do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I completely understand how it takes its toll but uh yeah uh, you know give him black widow make it a smaller film it doesn't have to be a small film but you know don't make it age of ultron don't make it civil war make it you know black widow out there being being jason Bourne. totally you know i I wonder too if one of the issues with black widow is because she is a spy and because she kills a lot of people too i wonder if disney is apprehensive about putting that under their banner i wonder uh Possibly, you know that's uh, that's something that uh, merits considering. Because like, if they wanted uh, I, to give uh, like Black Widow a really gritty Netflix show, I'd be like, wicked. Oh yeah, that would be fantastic. I could not. Uh, uh, I, I think you have a very good point, and I, I don't necessarily. But would she see do Netflix? Them. I don't think Scarlett Johansson would do Netflix. She'd be like, no, I'm not going to lower myself to Netflix. Yeah, I'm a yeah. freaking movie star, movie or nothing. Yeah, precisely. So uh, that that might very well be the case. And plus, it doesn't seem like uh, Marvel Cinematic and Netflix uh, really communicate all that much. Which is so. super sad, isn't it? Because the whole time I was watching Civil War, again, not really spoiler territory, but I get the feeling if you're listening to this, you've seen the movie or know what's going on. Not so much as a mention to street level. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, they could have at least thrown a nod to Daredevil and Cage they, and they, Jessica. They had a you perfect know? opportunity in the movie, and they didn't do it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, just just a little hint that would have been fine. But uh, they didn't do it, and that was it's really a missed opportunity. I uh, I'm at a loss as to why they don't play together. Here's, they the, really should. The, the rumor is Isaac Perlmutter is the guy kind of shitting in the punch bowl on this one. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, that's uh, you know you. I've heard a lot about uh, all of the uh, you know drama and everything. All so the players behind the scenes and everything. Yeah, yeah. So who knows? But man, it's really just come on. Yeah. Everybody wants it. You'll make more money. Everybody's happy. It's true. You know what my pitch would always be for one of these: make it another buddy movie. Only the thing is, she's the lead. Hawkeye is her buddy, and they need to go back to Russia because, like, Hydra or someone is restarting the Red Room experiments. Uh, that would be great, and that leads me to correct my previous comment. Uh, Hawkeye hasn't had a film. No, oh, that's right. Hawkeye has not had a film. I always su- assumed that's the way it was going to go. It would be like Black Widow, Hawkeye, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. if they ever did one. But then again, S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. has fallen apart now, so it would kind of have to be them on their own, wouldn't it? Yeah, I haven't really been keeping up with the television show. Uh, it's good. So, They've done some quality yeah. stuff. They're really pushing the Inhumans in a big way. They they pull a couple characters here and there where you're like, no way are they going to do blank, but they do blank. And here's another amazing thing. Powers Booth uh, played a villain in this newest season, and he had a hell of an arc. Uh, it sounds like i got to catch up then. Here, here's the crazy thing, too. You actually know Powers Booth's character because Power Bo- Powers Booth's character was in the first Avengers. Remember those shadowy guys talking to Nick Fury? Oh, yeah. He was one of them, and he's the same guy. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's really cool because I know when Powers Booth showed up, I'm like, oh, look, beloved character actor. No way he's playing the same shadow guy he was in Avengers 1. Oh, my God, he is. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's awesome that they were able to pull that off. Mm, such a good actor and such a good arc they had for him. Uh, oh, he's he's great in everything. I loved him in uh, Frailty, if you ever saw that one. Mm, he was good in that. He had a good voice role just recently. I don't know if you ever watched, uh, oh, God, what was that thing with Rob Lowe? Moonbeam City. He played, like, uh, the mayor in that, and he was really creepy and really good. 
Uh, that uh, I've never heard of that one at all. <laughs> uh, M- Moonbeam City. It was an animated thing on Comedy Central. I think it was on like after South Park. It's it's already been canceled after a season, but it had this amazing synth score to it. Everything the the whole cartoon. It looked like a Duran Duran cover, is what it looked. Oh, like. Oh, okay. It, uh, you only you know. I I think I know what you're talking about, but uh, you can uh, you can put Powers Booth in any Marvel thing you want, but he will always be Gorilla Grodd Hell to me. Hell yeah, he will. Such a such a good bit. Oh man, him acting across Clancy Brown, forget about it. So, oh, so, so all of these gravelly voiced guys. Guys together in a room. Mis- Mr. I'm gonna create the secret society of supervillains and we're gonna hang out in the freaking skull ship from Super Friends, <laughs> the Legion of Doom. So Dude. perfect, so perfect. You know, that was a Dwayne McDuffie pitch. He was the one who really wanted to do that. He's like, no, the secret society of supervillains has to meet in the Skullhead Fortress in the Swamp from Super Friends. Yes. M- man, talk about a guy who we all lost too soon, Dwayne McDuffie. Uh, oh, he was tremendous. I love the uh, the letter he sent out to Marvel in the 90s about mm-hmm. how all of the, the black characters were on skateboards. About and Night like Thrasher just... and shit. Yeah, we, we yeah. talked about this the last time you were on, actually. Oh, did we? Yeah, we had a good, we had a good <laughs> bit funny. about this. And how hilarious, how since we did that show, Night Thrasher is actually back in the comics now. He's in Contest of Champions. Oh, really? Okay, I read the first Contest of Champions, but never did pick up the other ones. I was wondering just the other day what happened to him. It, it gets so much better, but here's the brilliant thing about Night Thrasher in Contest of Champions. So the thing is, obviously, it's tied into a frickin' phone game, so they're picking up Marvel heroes from yeah. across the multiverse and from across continuities. This is the Night Thrasher from Civil War. They pick him up minutes after the explosion that kicks off Civil War. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, with Nitro and everything uh, and the bus and, and all the that. New Warriors, oh, okay. Yeah, they drop him right into the tournament, and literally everyone on his team, from like Stick and all these other characters, they rip on him constantly, being like, Ooh, you're a ninja with a skateboard. Oh, yeah, you're really going to help us in this fight. Nice. Okay. I got to check that out because uh, I've always had kind of a weird fondness uh, for Night Thrasher and, the, you know, the New Warriors as a whole, especially since, uh, you know, they're really kind of uh, their golden age, if you can call it that, mm. of the 90s. Because that was like I was, you know, just eyeballs deep in anything I could get my hands on. So I had, you know, the whole run of Speedball and most nice. of the run of the New Warriors and all of that. Christopher Yost tried so hard to make the New Warriors work again. He's like, yeah, we got the new Nova and I can finally write all these Scarlet Spider stories that I wanted to write with Kane Oh, the I know. He's like, we can finally yeah, do know. it. it just, Boom, canceled. It just didn't happen. Yeah, that's a shame. I, I, uh, I read a couple of those, and they were pretty good. But uh, yeah, it never did. It never did really grab me. Mm-mm. Actually, uh, this is a perfect segue opportunity too, because we were talking about the Civil War, and we were talking about Night Thrasher. Civil War Two is coming down the pipeline. Obviously, if you went to Free Comic Book Day like Jason and myself did, you picked up an issue. Uh, that, it's not even a zero issue. They're actually coming out with a zero issue. I think it's just called uh, Civil War Two Free Comic Book Day issue. Yeah, yeah, I, I did pick that one up, and uh, it seemed a little hurried. Seems, you know, it seemed seemed a little bendis, seemed a little. I don't give a shit about what you other writers are writing. This is what I'm writing. <laughs> oh, was he was he disregarding some stuff that was I, already I, in effect? I, I thought he was. Is the big obviously we'll talk about this more when we jump into the what we read sure. this week thing. But uh, yeah, let, let's let's move on to the next the next one. We don't have to go down that rabbit hole right now. Oh, we will though. But but yeah, the topic I was going to say is they announced three new tie-in titles for uh, Civil War Two. I don't know what that brings the number up to, but they are two mystery titles, one called The Accursed and the other one called The Accused. Uh, what, do you, mm. what do you think those could be about? Uh, you know, uh, uh, who can say? Those are all just so vague oh, and yes. nebulous. You know, it, it doesn't really tell you a hell of a lot of anything, unfortunately. Uh, the one we do know something about is that Ulysses, this is the Inhuman who can actually see the future, who is going to be the inciting incident for the Civil War II. He's going to be getting a whole miniseries uh, written by Al Ewing, and it's going to be, I guess, his origin, how he found his way to New Attilan and how they learned he had his powers and everything. I guess that makes sense, that if this character is going to be so important, we should learn a little more about him. Yeah, I I do like Al Ewing quite a bit. Mm, I enjoy his stuff. yeah, I enjoy his writing. His uh, lucky book was good. He's doing Ultimates now. Yeah, uh, I haven't read any Ultimates yet, but Neither I was reading I. his Mighty Avengers, which is that was also kind of, fun. you know, 
yeah, a very similar uh, setup of the Ultimates. But uh, they're still just trying to make me care about the Inhumans, and it's just so forced. I just can't bring myself to get with it. I, I totally dig the Inhumans. I think Charles Soul is kicking ass on the main Inhuman oh, book. I, you know what? I hear that's great, and I love just about everything Charles does. So I, I, it, it's me. It's my own hang-up. Uh, you're, you're not I, alone I, in that. I know a lot of the older fans, of which you know I do stuff with, are kind of like, you know, stop trying to make the Inhumans happen. Stop trying to make them the new X-Men. And Marvel's like, until we sign the deal with Fox, they are the new X-Men, and you're going to like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I, I really need to check out uh, Charles Soule's uh, stuff, because I read really just about everything uh, that he puts out, so uh, that Hell really should be an exception. To, I got to meet him at Fan Expo last year, and he signed he signed my copy of New Inhumans number one, and I talked to him for a bit. Yeah, he's a great guy, really talkative. Uh, I I I enjoy. Uh, uh, I, I've only uh, hung out with him like once. Uh, we actually did karaoke together. Um, nice. But, what so, what uh, song he, did he say? <laughs> God, I don't remember. He was really good at it, though. He's a musician. He's a really good musician. Wow, a musician uh, and, and a lawyer and a comic book writer. Yeah, yeah, he's a prolific comic book writer too. He's he's incredible, uh, but uh, yeah, I really enjoy all the stuff that he's doing. Uh, I, I'm waiting for Poe Dameron to be collected so I can mm. pick that up. Uh, I, because... I have the first issue that I have not read. Yeah, he's been killing it on those Star Wars books. He's picked up a couple mini series and ongoing. Yeah, so he's like yeah, I'll yeah. write these. His Lando was excellent. It was really oh, yeah. good. Super cool Lando book. I love I I love what they did with his sidekick there with what they did with Lobot. Oh yeah, that was. That was such uh, an interesting uh, way to uh, build some character where there wasn't one, really, mm-hmm. you know? A lot of that in the Disney Star Wars books. Uh, but what was I going to say at a point? Oh, yeah, d- talking about Charles Soule. Yeah, I-, I interviewed him at Fan Expo last year, and here's a story you would probably get a kick out of. This was just when it was announced that he was going to be doing Daredevil. So obviously, of course, I had a ton of Daredevil questions I wanted to ask him. And I said, you know, are you nervous stepping into, you know... Uh, the writing chair for Daredevil, because this is a character who's had such an amazing succession of writers from the good Frank Miller years to uh, Bendis to Brubaker to everyone in between. And uh, as I said that, the guy at the table directly next to him was Alex Maleev. And Alex Maleev oh. pipes up and says, oh, you know, oh, you give all the credit to the writers. What about the artists who made it work? Uh, and I'm like, and I'm like, because I'm filming this for the channel. I'm like, guys, guys, Alex Maleev just burned me. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Maleev totally had my number and I had to think quick and I'm like oh well everyone knows you know the the artists do an amazing job you, you yours in particular so I had to kick it kiss his ass a little bit yeah. but that being said he did have some sick ass fucking art for the Bendis years oh yeah that uh yeah his stuff in there I I really really enjoy Maleev he's uh one of my favorite uh working artists uh, uh I like it I, I think it's a good balance between uh realism and uh, comic mm-hmm. sensibilities doing uh he's doing international Iron Man right now too now, also next oh that's to right yeah which is gorgeous oh yes it's a very very pretty book and uh, actually again perfect segue now that we're here i guess we can jump into the titles that we read this week and because we already kind of teased civil war too i guess we can talk about what we thought about that uh it you know it's hard for me to say really what i uh read this week because i don't pick up my stuff weekly anymore well, just in so general should... and i'm sure i've read yeah. a lot of that too well i usually go in there uh monthly uh you know uh, earlier i uh I mentioned that I read the uh, Captain America trade, mm-hmm. uh, the Sam Wilson Captain America trade. Nice. You know, picked up. I uh, uh, told you about all those things I picked up at Free Comic Book Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I picked up uh, Harrow County Volume Two, which oh, I yes. unfortunately uh, haven't read yet. I, I hear uh, good things about that. I don't read near as much of the indie stuff as I would like to because I'm trying to keep up with the big two because that's my bread and butter online. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, I. Uh, um, God, what did I just? Oh, I just reread uh, Batman Endgame by Scott Snyder. Mm, uh, good stuff. Yeah, uh, Snyder's run on Batman, I think, uh, is one of the best ever. It, it's it is. just, it's so good. Uh, I read the. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, it became legendary at a point, and I feel a certain affinity and a certain kinship and connection to it because he started that run right around the same time I started my career talking and reviewing comic books online. So he's been doing that literally as long as I've been doing this. Oh, yeah, right on. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's really, really enjoyable. It's, it's, a, it's a little dark, oh, you yeah. know. Um, it's a little dark. Uh, but but you know, what isn't people... at DC these days? 
Uh, yeah, that's true. And I think he's taking it in a new direction when he launches on, what is he doing? Uh, All-Star it, Batman. All-Star Batman. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, which, which hilarious title, All-Star Batman. I don't know if you watched the press conference where they announced that where Jim Lee uh, was there. He's like, hey, you're taking my All-Star Batman and Robin name. I'm going to oh. finish that one of these days. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so they just made a joke out of it. Oh, great. Oh, dude, yeah, man, sure. that press conference where they announced DC Rebirth, if you haven't seen it, I think you should. I haven't. One... Oh, did you? No, 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 I haven't. I have not. Oh, you have? Here's the thing. They were more personable, more funny, and more down-to-earth than I think I've ever seen DC as a comic book company in all the time I've been talking about them professionally. They made jokes. They were charming. Dan fucking DiDio was charming. Oh, that's fantastic. It was beautiful. Uh, ma they made fun of the stupid mistakes they made. Jim Lee's like, so as you can see, we redesigned Superman's costume. We got rid of the collars. Pff, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah, you don't, uh, know, you don't know what you were thinking for the last four to five years. Well, that is a, a, a tremendous amount of candor. Okay. <laughs> now, that being said, there was some stuff they lied about, too. Jeff Johns being like, yeah, we're not going to let the movies and TV shows influence our books anymore. We're going to commit to telling good stories. Now, here's the Suicide Squad with the team from the movie. Here's Green Arrow with a costume much closer to the new TV show costume. <laughs> what, what we meant is yeah. it's not going to be close to the TV and movies for things that we don't have TV and movies about. That's that's why. Also, well, they're... they're also, Constantine gets to go back to being Hellblazer now because his show is completely dead and we're not going to do anything more with him. Yeah. Well, they're walking a fine line. You know, on the one hand, you don't want uh, uh, the uh, tail to wag the dog, Ooh, yeah. uh, such as it is, too much. But, uh, I mean, but you want to bring in new... Uh, you want to bring in new viewers or new readers, you know, and that's uh, that's the best way to do it. Even though historically it hasn't really worked very well, they from what I understand. They never stay in the numbers you want them to stay. Is the thing? Yeah, yeah, and that's a shame. That's but uh, you know I can understand. I get it because comics are they they take you have to make a leap of faith because there's a lot of stuff there that you really might not understand yeah. uh, if if you're not just well versed in comics. It, it, if you're not well versed in it already, it's it's a lot of it can look like a wall, that's and that's sure. really you know because there's just so much of it, and there's and there's really so many good things. I I, I get it, and that, I don't mean that to be an indictment. But it's just something that it, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. It requires an investment, but once you do give yourself up to it and try to learn about it, it really really pays is off but and, that's and a different I, I argument like to, altogether oh yeah and I, and I like to think too in this internet age you know where information is so readily available and they're so you know well kept wikipedias and you know plot synopsises and everything and even guys like myself and people i work with online who are trying to bring this stuff to you i know in my reviews and my videos i make on comics i do reviews but i also try and present it in like a soap opera digest type format because let's face it our, our comic books are our stories man is what they are yeah yeah precisely yeah they're, no bones about it they're they're you know super uh they're uh, they're soap operas uh, for the super powered and, set and in some cases more so than ever i mean x-men is just the longest running comic book soap opera of all it is it is the coronation street of comic books Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, uh, that there's no bones about it. You know, I don't want to be all high and mighty like it is an art form. You know, I mean, because it certainly can be high art, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's just pulp, and I love that too. It's true. It, it can do both. I, I, uh, I guess too, because we were kind of touching on it there. A uh, civil war too. Uh, what, what did you think of it? Because I know one of the things that got to me, and I had to have people correct me is uh, one of the things it starts off with is like, hey, War Machine and Carol Danvers have actually been in a relationship. And I'm like, seriously? W where, when did that happen? I missed that. Yeah, I did too. That uh, was news to me. Apparently, I had... apparently very early on in the Kelly Sue DeConnick run, she put them together, and then obviously she left the book. The new writers haven't talked about it. Hell, Bendis himself hasn't talked about it in the new Iron Man book that he writes, even though he wrote a whole big arc that focused on Rhodey. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay. Very. So, so <laughs> yeah, I need to catch up because there's, I, I, I need to catch up on stuff like that because there's just, you know, there's so, so much stuff happening in, you know, little corners that, you know, you turn away for a second and it's, it's like, oh, okay. It, it that's just the thing funny. now. It seemed funny that they would make that the backbone of what seems to be the ex inciting incident of the Civil War to, to be like, hey, here's this relationship most of you have probably forgotten about, but it's still totally a thing. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, they make a point of saying, oh, it's a long-distance relationship, and even, uh, what is it, their teammates didn't know it was still going on. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's, you know, it, I don't know. It's one of those things where, much like soap operas, if you tune out for a week, mm. everything can change, you oh, know? Oh, yes, and this was definitely one of those. Now, did, did you find this as funny as I did? Obviously, they fight Thanos in this new issue. Why does Thanos have, like, a million guns? I thought Thanos was incredibly <laughs> overpowered already. Why does Thanos need a big Rambo gun? It uh, it didn't seem like like the correct interpretation uh i i I had fun with the story and i enjoyed it but i was like i was like uh okay it reminds me of that quote from that star trek movie it's like what does god or why does god need a starship Mm -hmm. why does thanos need a machine gun yeah exactly i was like okay well hard times he's uh He's uh, he's holding, you know, he's performing more terrestrial crimes mm-hmm. now than he, he's more than get galactic that, warlord. Yeah, he's he's got to get that cosmic cube to pay this month's space rent. Yeah, precisely. He, it was it was a, it was a strange choice. Th- this is the Mad Titan equivalent of like a liquor store robbery. Give me all your magical items right now. <laughs> I'll do it, man. I'm fucking crazy. I'm the Mad <laughs> Titan. I'll shoot you. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Just Thanos cracked out of his mind. I need it, man. I need it bad. Yeah, give me some of that cube, motherfucker. He just snorted up, friggin' cubes turning into children. A- have you seen that? Did you read Standoff? Uh, you know, I read a couple of issues of it. I haven't uh, finished it yet. It, it but, was good. Yeah. It was solid. Again, Nick Spencer was the architect of that one, so it ended up being pretty cool Captain America-centric event. Uh, another thing that I know a lot of fans and a lot of people in the comment section were angry about, where it's like, oh no, Rhodey might be dead, even though we've seen him in the promotional artwork, even though that doesn't mean anything. And also, She-Hulk was hurt by a missile, and we're like, really? She-Hulk, who absorbs missiles all the time, got almost fatally hurt yeah. by, like, a yeah. war machine missile? Really? <laughs> That was surprising. I was like, damn, what is War Machine packing that could hurt the She-Hulk? I mean, you know, that, I, I, uh... may, I mean maybe he brought out the good shit because he knew he was fighting Thanos. Maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is that a nuke? Because that seems kind of reckless to at least that's like, okay, what kind of missile could hit She-Hulk and hurt her so badly but really not do much damage to the rest of the team that was there. Oh, yeah. Also, another thing the book doesn't explain, and I went out of my way to try and mention in my review, where it's like, okay, so Rhodey was going to meet his girlfriend, uh, Carol Danvers, who was a member of the Ultimates. The Ultimates were having a meeting with the Inhumans, led by Medusa, because they have the new Inhuman who can see the future. They all set up a trap for Thanos, so they all go together, obviously, and supposedly in that time as well, Carol Danvers places a call to A-Force, of which she is also a member, her and She-Hulk, so they came along for this, but no one bothered to call any of the teams that had Avengers in their name. <laughs> right. Even though there's three <laughs> Avengers books going on right now, neither Uncanny, All New, All Different, or New got to come to this party. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, you know, you think that uh, when Thanos shows up on Earth, you really want to bring, I don't know, everyone? (laughs) Yeah. It was just kind of a funny thing where it's just like, it's strange that you, you, uh, what is it, had these particular teams that you wanted to do for this. Now, for all I know, that's going to be an issue moving down the line, and maybe Tony or Sam or even Steve will be like, whoa, you guys didn't call us in on this? What the hell? Yeah, that's... uh... (laughs) It. They were. Now that we're dissecting it, there were some choices that there were made in very... those in those few pages that were like, okay, this is we're we're just rushing headlong into Civil War two, and you just kind of cram it into the free comic book day. It's like, uh, it, okay. And there's that too. It is a free comic book day issue, so obviously, I'm sure they didn't intend people to dissect it like this. It's more a piece of promotional material than it is an actual comic. And I always feel as a critic. I'm, you know, uh, I'm a consumer advocate, so I was kind of gentle to it and everything, but I also knew we were going to be able to do this show and make fun of it and stuff, too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just just riff tracks the shit out of this thing I got for free. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, I still had a good time with it, but it doesn't, uh, a lot of of the stuff in there doesn't uh, hold up to close scrutiny. It, It also feels weird, too, because even though supposedly this is the beginning of the story, it felt like it could take place anywhere. Yeah. That's a good point. In fact, uh, I think it will, because I know they had some pages, I think Bleeding Cool had some pages up, for, like, Civil War issue number zero, and it showed Carol and Rhodey, and they were fine. So I'm like, okay, so maybe what we read was the middle of the story. Oh, right, right. I see where you're going. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, that uh, that's entirely possible. I and get the, that. And the fact that the Inhumans knew who this Ulysses guy was and knew what his deal was and everything, that it wasn't new to them, makes me think that this is further on in the timeline yeah. of the story. Well, what I was thinking was that this, uh, that this short, uh, this entire story, was going to be revealed as one of Ulysses' visions of what could Ooh. happen. Ooh, that would be cool. Like, this is not the future that will be. This is a future that could be if things yeah, are not changed. Yeah. And, you know, it's still, there's some stuff in there that doesn't make a lot of sense. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that might tie up a few loose ends, right? It was, it was all a dream. <laughs> right. <laughs> where, where, where do you stand on this new Civil War? Obviously, what, what, what the battle or the ideological battle is going to be this time is Team Captain Marvel says we should use this new Inhumans ability to see the future, to, to basically pre-crime, to basically be minority report and stop crimes before they happen. And Iron Man flipping ideologies from the original Civil War going, hey, you know, personal liberties and you can't, uh, the, the punishment yeah. can't come before the crime and all that other stuff. Yeah, that, uh, you know, I hope that it's, it's well-tread ground, right? Mm -hmm. This is stuff that has been covered, you know, a, a philosophy or an, an argument that's been covered quite a bit uh, in the past. So I'm really hoping that they justify the positions people take, but, like, seeing Iron Man on one side and seeing Spider-Man on the pro-minority report side... It's like, damn it, Spider-Man, you picked the wrong team twice, what the hell? Yeah, and it just... I, I was like... Uh, I don't really see Spidey making that particular decision. Peter Parker, but, I make bad decisions, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe they'll justify it uh, in the story itself. Uh, I'm hoping so. Uh, who's who's writing Civil War Two? Is it Bendis? Yeah, Bendis is going to have the wheel okay. on this one. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Um, I I'm just uh, a little surprised to see the characters, and and maybe that's uh, to see where the characters have fallen, what size they've chosen, but. You know, maybe that's part of the allure. Maybe I that's guess. okay. Let's let's throw everybody for a loop because we've got a good hook as to why Spider Man is on the the pro, mm. you know, pre crime side or whatever. Well, you well him and like. Tony are at odds right now because Peter Parker is running his own corporation currently, and he has become yeah. the biggest uh, biggest competition to Stark Industries. In fact, he's kind of burying them at the moment. Yeah, yeah, and I uh, I, I just got through uh, reading that. Um, I just got through reading The Amazing Spider-Man, mm. uh, the first trade on oh, that, nice. uh, what was it called, Worldwide or something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 Sp Spider-Man uh, moving to China and everything. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 crazy. It's crazy, just over the top. Uh, oh, yes. Nutty stuff that I, you know, it's like when they're... Well, you know, when when we get down the road and we get more Spider-Man movies, well, what should they adapt next? I I don't see myself saying worldwide. <laughs> it's, it's just you know, it's, it's like I was a big pusher of that when it started. You know, I'm a big fan of Dan Slott. Obviously, I haven't read all like all all ten years of his run that's been going on. Yeah. I haven't read all of it, but you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm cool with Spider-Man having more adult problems and having a company. And you know, you got Miles now; he can have the young teen problems and he can live in New York and everything. That's a nice little compromise. Then they kept pushing the Zodiac. I think the book is back on its feet now because they're trying to get that next Spider-Man event going, uh, Dead No More. Yeah, it's just so crazy. It is. It's like all of, it, it's 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 insane and I'm enjoying it, but it 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 is the opposite of your meat and potato Spider-Man, which do you know, maybe feel, maybe it's what makes it so good. I don't know. I guess. Now, do you feel that this is almost like Dan Slott going, like, look, my days on this book are numbered, so before I go, I'm going to do all the crazy shit I couldn't do in the last ten years? Well, you know, he's always said... Uh, he's always said that uh, he will give up writing Spider-Man when they pry it from his fingers. Cold, dead hands, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Just, I don't know if he's going anywhere soon. Like, like I say good on you for having a Spider-Man story, like, every week and every month, because, like, I like the character of Spider-Man, but if you ask me, hey, pitch me a Spider-Man story that's fresh and new and hasn't been done before, I'd be like, eh. Yeah, how? How I, could you do I, I that? I got nothing. Like, like, everyone has a Batman elevator pitch. Everyone has a pitch for a certain hero. Spider-Man, it's got to be hard to pitch ideas for Spider-Man. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I imagine it's any legacy character like that, with Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, uh, it would probably be pretty difficult. Uh, I mean, I know I have plenty, but I've sat down to say, okay, what would I do if I was telling a Batman story? And then I filled out this notebook. You know, yeah. what would I do if I was telling a Spider-Man story? But it's not like the easiest thing. It's it's. I think it's way easier to come at uh, characters who don't have 
you know, 50, so much 60 baggage, years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And at some point, you just kind of have to shuffle off the bag and just say, you know what? I'm not really going to pay much attention to that. I'm just going to tell a good story. Mm-hmm. Uh, another new book that came out this week, and I know people are probably chomping at the bit for me to talk about it. Uh, Becky Cloonan's Punisher Number 1 came out this week. Yeah, I wanted to read that, but it was sold out. So Aww. I'm either going to have to uh, pick it up. Uh, I'll probably pick it up when it comes out in trade because I'm hearing good things about it, especially with the Steve Dillon art. Fun, uh, fun book. Fun, fun book is what it is. Uh, Steve Dillon back on art. Steve Dillon, who drew the Punisher back when I first started reading him in the Garth Ennis years. I'm so happy that he's back on this book. It's like putting on a familiar glove when he does Punisher art. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's uh, he's uh, really becoming like the definitive Punisher artist if he's not already. Uh, but yeah, I didn't get a chance to read that. I didn't get a chance to pick up uh, the new Moon Knight relaunch, unfortunately, oh, which I hear is really, really good. Uh, that's one of them on my list. Do you like Shutter Island? Because it's very Shutter Island. Oh, cool. Okay, okay. That uh, I'm curious. And yeah, if you've been reading Moon Knight for years, which you have. I think this book is even more for you because they drop a ton of references to supporting characters oh good good yeah from years I, past yeah nice okay uh yeah i'll i, I will have to check that out because i i have been reading it uh but i i switched like most of my comics over to trades and so i i'm usually behind by like six months now and it's mm. kind of driving me crazy but it looks better on the shelf because there's totally. it's like the single issues are just overrunning my house i mean they're really just killing me i'm going to die under a pile of, of bags and bags and boards or something like there's, that. Th- there's worse ways to go, like butt cancer. There's worse ways to go. I feel <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's like uh, oh, he 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 would have wanted it this way. That's what they're gonna say. He, he ate himself to death seven style. Oh, that's not so bad. I mean, I could I could see myself doing that in certain circumstances. Depends on where I'm at. <laughs> if, if I get if I get to pick what I can eat, I mean, I always hear amazing stories of what you guys have out in Austin in terms of barbecue. I feel like I need to make a trip there just so I can go around and eat some stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty legendary. It, it's uh, we're actually uh, making a plan to go uh, get some uh, some some of the uh, just. Obs- obscene amounts of uh, delicious barbecue that we have in town. We're we're looking to do that uh, you've got, here. You've got your Salt Lake. You've got your crazy donut places. Yeah, you've got yeah. Gyms of which I have heard much about listening to your work. Oh, Gyms is it's 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 a just a crappy diner. You know, it's fine. <laughs> it's fun, but but you know, but they got the Jason Murphy bump. Is what they got. <laughs> Oh, did they? <laughs> they got the Jason Murphy bump for all the years you and Jeff talked about it on a Rage Select. Oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll call Cargill sometime. And I'm like, hey, let's go to breakfast. Okay, meet your gyms. And uh, uh, get... Cargill, everyone he's mentioning, also known as uh, Mass Worm on Ain't It Cool News back when he wrote there, uh, known as Cargyle in Spill, and also as the dude who is currently writing Doctor Strange. Yes, that guy. P- people who have said before where it's like, oh, I bet Joel doesn't really have like three degrees of Kevin Bacon with the Doctor Strange. Right? Yes, I do. I know Jason. Jason knows him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so suck it, uh, Internet friends. <laughs> I, I have uh, I've been to gyms more times than is necessary. It seems to be kind of a hub of uh, activity among my friends, which is kind of strange. And maybe that just means that we're getting really old. A, a wretched hive <laughs> of scum and villainy. Indeed, it is. Especially when you go in there like four in the morning. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of grotesque. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other books to talk about because I know uh, you didn't read. Oh, uh, I guess another book to talk about: uh, Thunderbolts Number One uh, relaunch oh, this week. I didn't get to check that one up. That's with uh, Bucky leading the team, right? Bucky leading the team and more or less the original group from when uh, bullshit from when Baron Zemo came out with the team first when they were all pretending to be heroes. Oh, very exciting. I've got to check that out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking a lot of the uh, new Marvel Number Ones. Uh, it's, uh, it's some good stuff there, and I'm also. Uh, Really uh, excited about how um, what is it? Re- rebirth. God, I keep wanting to say resurgence, but that's not it. You're right. Um, you're you're, you're kind of you're kind of robot in there, Jason. It sounds like Ultron took over your microphone for a second there. Oh, oh, sorry. Is that better? A uh, little bit better. I, I don't know what you did, but it sounded slightly better. Oh, weird. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what was going on. Um, you, you, you're 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 still robot in there. Ultron still has you in his clutches. But let him go, uh, Ultron. Let him go. Damn it. I don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe plug your mic in and out there and see if that does anything. It's an onboard mic. Hang on, hang on. Ah, you, you sound super fuzzy. 
Okay, is that any better? Much better. World's better. Okay. Oh, and now, and now it's bad again. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm still, st st still nothing. Still, still hearing the sweet sounds of Skynet in my ear holes. You want me to try to come back? Uh, sure. Let's try doing that then. Hey, everyone, we'll be back after we restart the call. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was Thunderbolts we were talking about. This is the new Bucky led team spinning out of uh, spinning out of standoff and everything. Oh, yeah. Hang on, hang on one sec. Let me try one quick thing here. Okay, we're we're still getting the audio right, people. Is the thing. You gotta, you gotta make a nice sounding show and everything. Is what you gotta try and do. Okay, how, how, how do I sound now? Fine, you sound, you sound a okay. U Ultron. Oh, good. Okay, Ult I switched headphones, so there you go. Ultron doesn't have you by the short and curlies anymore. Oh, thank God! I'm so sorry about that. Oh, so it, it happens, man. To text you, I, I'm just glad it's not me for once. Yeah, weird. Okay, so yeah, Thunderbolts. Uh, Bucky has taken control of the team. Yes, and he's making it kind of an anti-Shield team because if you've been reading Standoff, Shield has kind of been acting the fool recently and been kind of shitty. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's. Uh, I was wondering when they're going to, in the comics anyway, make Shield the good guys again because it's been a long time, uh, and they're pretty horrible. Yeah, under Maria Hill, definitely. I mean, Maria Hill was the villain of Standoff. Yeah, yeah, and uh, she is just uh, a horrible, horrible monster. Like in everything you see her in. I, uh, I, I don't want to spoil it, but she gives an amazing speech when she's kind of getting raked across the coals by her superiors where she justifies her behavior, and it's an amazing villain speech she gives. Oh, nice. She, okay. She brings up Ronald Reagan. It's great. Uh, <laughs> sounds like uh, very much like a, a few good men. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. It, that's exactly what she does. That's pretty much what it is, where it's like, you know, I, I might be bad. I might be a monster, but I keep the other monsters away. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally one of those. This new book is fun. It's Jim Zub writing it. Good Canadian boy. Another guy I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot. In fact, uh, in fact, he teaches art in Toronto. He actually teaches oh, right one of my on. friends. Yeah, when he's not writing comic books. The one thing that kills it, though, is I'm sure this was a great idea in the pitch meeting when they're like, hey, you know what we should do? We should have the art be a fun throwback to the original 90s Thunderbolts. And that's what they do, and it does not look good. Oh, really? Yep, there. That wasn't just a fun cover concept. The cover that I'm sure you've seen, that's what the book actually looks like. Oh, man, that's, uh, I, I, that's, it sounds like a good idea in theory. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, that's unfortunate that it doesn't look good. They did the same thing with, like, the Secret Wars uh, uh, Age of Apocalypse tie-in book they did, where it's like, yeah, let's make the art actually look like it did back then. And it's oh, like, right. no, that art has fallen out of favor and out of style for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> do, don't do it. Don't fight that urge. Please fight See, that urge. I've seen that work before, but it's usually when they're throwing back to like the golden, you know, the silver age stuff, you mm. know, that uh, like when they're, you know, like uh, the time in the 90s when uh, Deadpool uh, time traveled back to like Amazing Fantasy, you know. Uh, which he still kind of does. I don't know if you've been reading the Duggan run, but one of the most interesting things they do in that is every so often they'll do like a, hey, Deadpool found a secret hidden issue that they had in the back of the Marvel offices. Oh, yeah. I have read those, and they're fantastic. They're so super funny. Fun. Like, you, like, you'll go back to the 60s and hang out with the original Nick Fury, or he'll go back to the 90s and run around with Cable for a little bit. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's ridiculous. Uh, of course, I love the one where he teams up with Power Man and Iron Fist. Oh, that so. one's excellent. Dude, speaking of Power Man and Iron Fist, I have you here so I can talk about it. Have you been reading that new Power Man and Iron Fist series from David Walker? Oh, it's fantastic. I love it. It's the first thing I read every time it's in my stack. It's one of I, my favorite things that's out right now. Yeah, that's one of the ones I'm getting month to month, and I'll be getting the trade when it comes out. It's so good. I was so thrilled to find out that David Walker was writing it because I'm a fan of his Shaft comic. I know, it's funny when I picked up that book, I'm like, man, this has got a great black exploitation feel to it. I feel like I'm reading Shaft. Who wrote this only to research and be like, oh, this guy also wrote Shaft books? Holy shit. Yeah, but his Shaft book is kind of told straight, you know? Oh, wow. But uh, Whereas Power Man and Iron Fist is kind of silly and fun and oh, I just I love it so much. I, I, I like in the last issue, they tried to get some help from Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange is like, mm, sorry, I, I, I don't know this hood magic. You can't. I can't help you with this. So they go to Senor Magica, who owns a magical pawn shop, who helps. Oh, them. Yeah, it's so clever. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and it uh, you know 
that puts the team back together, which is what everyone who is a fan has always wanted. Mm -hmm. Even though Luke is fighting that tooth and nail, no, we're not back together, no, we're not a team. Meanwhile, Danny's making up flyers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah it's, I'm surprised it's no so... one mentions Danny like that Carrie Andrews run that came before. It's like, hey, Danny, weren't you really dark and depressed like just last week? Yep, and they're just like, nope, uh, we're just gonna sleep, uh, sweep that under the rug. That never happened. Living weapon never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, they just roundly ignore that, and uh, I was like, oh, okay. I think I go think, on with it. Sure. I, th I think that bodes well for how Danny's gonna be in the new Netflix series too, if that's the way they're writing him currently in this. I hope he's. I hope he's. I prefer the fun take. I you think. Know, I, I think he's got to be because Daredevil is super serious and Jessica Jones is super serious and Luke Cage is serious. Let Danny be the fun one. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I, I. I think the the Netflix series really, really needs some levity because there's only so many hard drinking, tortured souls you can put together before yeah, it just really. becomes oppressive in one note. <laughs> They'll try though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? I can't. I can't wait to see what villains they're gonna pull out for that. Because I think you know, I'm not telling tales out of school when I say the best Marvel villains we've seen so far have been in the TV shows. Oh yeah, they they're they're handled really well because uh, they have time they to breathe so and you can tell their stories. Yeah, yeah. They could use a few more, I think. But I mean, Iron Fist doesn't really have you know a huge uh, pantheon of villains not a rogue uh, guy i mean steel serpent is the one people keep tapping that he'll probably be in this yeah uh, you know but all the other ones are like got d-listers you know dude, dude uh, we, again we had this conversation before Sabretooth, before he became the awesome x-men villain started out as an iron fist villain yeah yeah I, of course, we're not going to see that. You know, that's not going to happen. So. No. Would be fun, though, but it's never going to happen. Even better if Liev Shriver showed up and said, hello, I'm in this now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dude, have you seen Ray Donovan? Liev Shriver is fucking no, awesome in Ray Donovan. You... Oh, I hear he's so good. And it's such a great show. It's it, just... is, it is his Breaking Bad. It's the best show no one's watching. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I hear it's just absolutely fantastic. I just watched him in The Last Days of Mars, like last week, and I oh, really enjoyed it. Talk about a man who's had a real career resurgence in stuff after, you know, some kind of like, a, who is this guy? To be like a guy whose name you know. Yeah, popped up in the 90s, was big for a while, then eh, kind of went away for a bit, but I always liked him. And uh, yeah, I, I really need to check out Ray Donovan. I hear nothing but good things about it. Now, again, too, because I know you're reading stuff in trade, and I will, don't want to try and spoil stuff you have around. I'm trying to think of some other books to uh, to mention here and kind of to, to conversate about. Uh, I know, uh, obviously, we mentioned DC Rebirth is coming up and everything, and one of the last big stories they're doing with New 52 Superman is something called Super League, and basically they're killing Superman all over again. Oh yeah, no, I uh, I heard about that. I, I'm I'm hoping they handle it well. Um, uh, Peter I'm... Tomasi is writing the shit out of this event. He's writing like all of it, and you actually get a new issue every week because it goes across all the Superman titles. It's actually really well done. Oh, like Batman Eternal. Okay. Well, well yeah. no, it's, it's not weekly. It's like you know, it'll be in Batman Superman one week, then it'll be in action, then it'll be in Superman. Oh, then it'll okay. Be in Superman, I got Wonder you. Woman. Okay. I like Peter Tomasi. I like what he did uh, in uh, over in. Uh, uh, the Batman titles he was working on. So oh, yeah. yeah, I need to check this out because that that sounds good. And I love the you know the the weekly storytelling. It's uh, it's really easy to get hooked into that kind of stuff if it's done right. Also, because Tomasi is going to be helming the DC Rebirth Superman, who is just old Fifty Two Superman back again from Convergence and back from everything else. Uh, yeah, this this has actually kind of become required reading now because not only is he telling the story of how New Fifty Two Superman presumably dies, but he's also planting the seeds of the new Chinese Superman who will be taking right. over as well. Right, which uh, yeah, more diversity, more Asian characters, awesome. I, uh, also, like, I not even I don't just know. that, just in the Superman family, it's like what was the last Superman family character that they invented? They keep inventing guys for the Bat family, but they rarely invent guys for the Superman family anymore. That's a really good point. You know, they really, they, yeah. Like, like know, Steel, go ahead. was Steel the last one? I think Steel might have been the last one. Oh, man, that's a good point. That was a long time ago. And hilariously, I joke about Steel. Dan Jurgens is going to be taking one of these new Superman books, too. 
Oh, nice. He is. Okay. And he's like, guess what, guys? Friggin' Doomsday is going to be in it again, and I'm going to be making reference to all this other stuff. Shit. I think the one he's writing, it actually follows, like, Lex Luthor, who is still kind of a hero in the fallout of Justice League and Forever Evil. Now, Lex Luthor's running around in, like, an Iron Man, Superman suit defending the yep. city. Uh, I've seen some pictures of that. Uh, a uh, that's a suit. Yeah, that's a curious take. Uh, but from everything that I've read and the few issues that I've read where. Uh, Luthor has become this anti-hero. Mm. It's like, okay, I can get on board with this. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. He's He's been my favorite member of the Justice League for the last little bit in Jeff Johns' Justice League because you can tell Johns is loving the idea of writing an anti-hero Luthor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, how could you not? I mean, just chew up the scenery, you know? Hell, just hell, go bananas I, I, I was kind of hoping in DC Rebirth, I'm like, you know, well, maybe maybe Lex should spin off and start his own team. Maybe he should start, like, his own for-profit Justice League. Call it Justice League, Inc., Oh yeah, that's that's a clever idea. It could be, it could be him <laughs> and Captain Cold and shit. Midnighter lost his book. Get Midnighter and Apollo to come over, and they can be the Superman and Batman of Luthor's new team. I kind of dig that. Of course, it would completely fall apart. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> as it always would. It's like these too many personalities bouncing off each other. It would never happen. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Were, uh, were you keeping up with Midnighter, the new uh, Orlando one that finished this week? That kind of finished its run at thirteen, but it was a good ending. I heard it was good. I haven't checked it out yet, uh, but uh, they, they make yeah, Midnighter I'm a fan of Midnighter. The, yeah. They make Midnighter into the most baddest ass motherfucker in the DC universe. Great, yeah, I got to check that out. It, I guess it hasn't been collected yet since the last issue came no, out. No, but it week. will be collected now because it ended rather abruptly, which is sad. But it, but it got an official ending. It wasn't a join us next time. It's a no. This is a final word we're writing on it. Okay, good, good. We knew the end was nigh at 13 issues. Right on. Okay, well, I will have to check that out. Uh, yeah, that's still. Uh, I, I've realized that uh, uh, of late, uh, my consistent reading of DC has slipped a little bit. Um, oh, I, oh, I'll oh, still oh, really. Snyder definitely feels a lot like Wildstorm. Oh, of course, yeah, for good reason, right? The, the last um, Wildstorm hero worth giving a shit about, and the last Wildstorm <laughs> hero to actually hold up his own book. Yeah, yeah. I should also say that I'm reading Black Canary, too, and oh, you loving see, the hell. I, I dropped off on that, but I'm super excited, because Green Arrow, they're going to reestablish her and Ollie back together again in Rebirth. Oh, good, good. It's I was hoping they were going to do that. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's about damn time, for real. I'm, I'm really glad to see that happening again. Uh, also, too, I guess because we're on the subject of Rebirth, what, what of all those books that are coming out are you really excited for? Because there's some interesting takes, and there's some interesting shit coming down the pipeline. Yeah, mostly I'm, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to Green Arrow. I'm looking forward to him getting back to kind of the swashbuckling, mm -hmm. uh, you know, politically charged. I've got uh, my goatee. I've got my politics. Let's let's go make the world a better place. Yeah, you know, let's let's see the smartass in there. Let's let's do that, Mister. Uh, how do uh, I fight I'm, the man while I am the man? Yeah, and I'm looking forward to uh, Tom King's uh, uh, Batman. Oh yeah. I'm, uh, Tom I, King is incredible. He's, I, uh, I skipped his vision run, right but now. I feel like I should jump in now because I know he's going to write Batman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He did uh, great stuff on Grayson when him and Seeley were uh, Helm and Grayson together. Sadly, they left because they got bigger projects. They got Batman and they got Nightwing, and sadly that book has gone downhill in its final stretch because they handed it over to other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, King is uh, fantastic. Is it, it's t Tom King, right? Tom, Tom King? King, yes, yes. Tom King, okay. Um, yeah, he's he's fantastic. I've read uh, you know little bits and pieces of his stuff uh, here and there, and so seeing him uh, take the reins of a AAA character like that that I'm already enjoying, uh, yeah, that should be fantastic. I'm, I'm excited to actually want to read Superman books again. I'd never read a goddamn thing about Superman in the New Fifty Two except for this Super League story where they're killing him. And I'm like, oh, how ironic! The first story I read about him is his death, assumedly. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and here's the funny thing. In death, he's more likable than he ever was in life because he's like, man, I'm upset not because I'm dying, but because of all the good I won't get to do now. I need to put my affairs in order. Yeah, that uh, sounds uh, familiar. What does that sound? Oh, All-Star Superman. That's the, what that sounds it's, like. <laughs> it's totally All-Star Superman. It's, <laughs> it's that to a T. But here's the thing, because yeah. Tomasi's such a smart writer, he doesn't even hide that that's what he's doing. Oh, good. Okay, well... If you can bring something new to the table, great. Uh, you know, just there's there's yeah. a line in that first issue where he's like, "And on that day, what if became what will?" 
<laughs> so this guy knows his shit. He's like, look, guys, I know none of you take the death of Superman seriously anymore, but try to just this once. So, yeah, right. Oh, that's good. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to give that a shot then. It's a fun to- Oh, I, I know another topic you and I got into deep, and I guess we'll make this our last topic before we uh, before we start to wind down the show. Uh, I'm a big fan of Gail Simone, huge fan of The Secret Six, and the last time uh, you were on the show, a while ago now, you and I were bemoaning the fact that the Dibneys were not around in the yeah. new 52 at all. Well, thank Gail Simone. She brought them back and actually gave them a hell of an arc. Sadly, that book will also not be t- returning for DC Rebirth, but she looks to be actually giving that a solid, worthwhile ending. Is that her uh, Secret Six? That is, yes. That is her new Secret Six that she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't picked that up yet. Uh, but uh, Fun once book, I kind of... and again, I think it's only going to be 13 issues, so you won't have to wait long for the trick. Okay, yeah. No, I heard that uh, the Dibneys were back in that, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm on it. Yes, yes. The, the, but, the Dibneys uh, are back, but where will they land is the thing, because they're not that's... announced to be any on any team in DC Rebirth. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I always end up liking these, like, not obscure, but semi-obscure characters, you know, not part of the big ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I always end up, like, latching on to those, and then it'll I'll go years without seeing them in a book, you know. Much like Iron Fist, mm, you know. That's, yeah. uh, He's been up and down. Uh, it's not fair. <laughs> Shit, if, uh, if, if I was freaking Brian Hitch, who's going to be writing the main Justice League book, I'd be like, hey, you know what? Ralph gets to be on the Justice League now, because why not? Yeah, absolutely. You know, let maybe, him shine. Maybe but, uh, maybe he'll be on that yet-to-be-announced Justice Society book, because they haven't mentioned anything about Earth 2 yet, and the feeling is that maybe Earth 2 is going away, and the Justice Society is coming back. I would like that, because that is one of the things that I really miss about the new 52. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I, I agree. Actually, there's actually, there's actually, like, this isn't just a pipe dream, there's actually some proof that would seem to suggest that that's exactly what's happening. Uh, DC put out a special preview thing. You probably saw it at your comic book store. It was just like a big, like, lovingly crafted book full of solicitations and all their new oh, yeah. titles. And on the back, what was on the back? Do you remember? Uh, I don't. It was the Justice Society in hourglasses, as they were in one of their final stories that used to be taken out by, uh, what is it, by the First Crisis, but after the events of Convergence, like Parallax and Old 52 Superman went back and stopped the First Crisis from happening, so that stuff still exists out there somewhere, which means the classic JSA exists out there somewhere in the newly established multiverse. Yes, yeah. So they can come back and be exactly like they were and not skip a beat, much like Old 52 Superman came back just exactly as he was and didn't skip a beat. Oh, that would be so great to see. It's like, come on, you want to you want to ignore like all of this legacy or shuffle it off to, you know, some other you know, parallel universe. It's like, yeah, give me, give me Alan Scott and Dr. Fate and just, yeah, just all of those. Like, Our you know, man. It's, it's like, give me those things and I'll stop complaining that you don't do anything with uh, Wildstorm or Static. So there you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was, wasn't there a rumor going on for a bit where it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to do some new stuff with Static and all those old Dwayne McDuffie heroes. We're going to launch them into their own imprint. And then that never happened. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's such a, Again, it's just missed opportunities. It's like you've got all of these like brilliant IPs there that are, people are waiting for, just chomping at the bit. So, but hey, you know, Blue, give Beetle, us Blue Beetle got a second kick of the can. Jaime Reyes gets to try it all over again, and Ted Cord's going to be there to help him out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I swear they had one where it's like, okay, guys, here's all our new titles. Now, here's a bunch of ones that fans have been yelling at us about. Let's throw a dart at the board, and whatever the dart lands on, we're going to get it. Oh, Blue Beetle, good for him. He won the dart toss. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll do him again. L- Lucky Jaime won the dart toss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Static. Better luck next time. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, your name didn't come up in the lottery. I, I imagine, like, Jonah Hex was probably on that one, too. Is it, can I, can I have a another book guys can i can i do it's, anything it's, it's bound to happen come on you know it's it's like I, I don't know why it's taken so long but uh it's 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 gotta happen eventually it's like uh, you know these things are cyclical you well, know that well, he's All, on they're, they're, tv every... now for a minute did you see he showed up on that legend show for a minute Oh, yeah, I did. I didn't see it, but uh, yeah. He he was really shitty in it. They got a terrible actor to play him. Legends isn't very good, but just the fact I'm like, okay, you know what? He's here now. Maybe he'll get another book. 
Well, I've always got my uh, my Joe Lansdale written Jonah Hex trades ah, that uh, I've read a number of times. I'll just keep going back to those. Th- th- those are good, even if I find myself more often coming back to the Jimmy Palmiotti, Justin Gray stuff. Sure. Yeah, that was also really good. Much more straightforward, but uh, yeah, very good. You know, it, it, it's funny, too. You know, one of the annoying things about that Legend show is here we have a bunch of heroes who travel around in time and everything, but they almost never tackle any of the issues traveling back in time like they should. So they just kind of welcome Jonah onto their ship and everything, and not one person says, hey, why are we hanging out with this Confederate Army member? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even funnier because there's yeah, a black there's a black guy on the team and I'm like that guy should be really uncomfortable around you. It's like you're not even reasons. you're not even going to address this really. You just you're just not going to bring that up. It's it's not that smart a show and I'm like that's a real missed opportunity and it blew me away because when I mentioned it in my review when I talked about it there's a whole generation of kids out there who had no idea that's why he wore a gray coat. I'm like yeah Jonah Hex was a freaking Southern soldier guys. Yeah exactly. It's that's like, why uh, awkward. Yeah, very <laughs> awkward. That's what. Yeah, I guess that would have ruined the family entertainment aspect because then you would have to explain. No, 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 no. Jonah's not racist. Everybody, it was just a geographical thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> he married an Asian woman later on in life. We promise. And traveled to the future many times. In that where... last Palmiotti run, he had a great run where he traveled to the future and even met Superman. Oh, that's right. That's right. Palmiotti so, yeah, writes he's... a mean Superman. I know they would never give him that book, but he writes a mean Superman. Yeah, it's Jonah Hex is enlightened now. He's 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 been to the future and think and seen how things should be. <laughs> Question mark. He shot it out with two desert eagles because of course he would. Of course. <laughs> he goes to a gun shop. He's like, "What's the biggest, meanest gun you have?" Ah, desert eagle. Thank you. I will take two. <laughs> because you need it. Uh, f- yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I guess that's just about it there. Uh, obviously, I don't want to spoil a lot of the other stuff that came out because, like you said, you read it in trade, and I think we had a humdinger of a show anyway. I'm sure the fans will enjoy it. I know I enjoyed it. Uh, any parting thoughts before we go? Uh, anywhere you want to tell the people where to find you, where to find your work and such? Uh, you can uh, check me out uh, weekly every Thursday and on various episodes of Scam School, but uh, I'm on The Modern Rogue, one of the hosts there on youtube.com forward slash scam school and uh, I'm on Twitter at Captain Murphy and uh, you can check out my book on Amazon.com it's called the Black Goat Motorcycle Club yes please please do all those things please uh, please go check out his shit I promise you'll like it I'm a fan and that's why he's on the show so there you go thank you sir Uh, and I guess with that everyone we will wind this episode down Thank you so much for watching the Comic Multiverse, for listening, doing all that other good stuff. Before you go, be sure to like, subscribe, favorite, do all that social media nonsense. Uh, Patrons will be getting the episode first. As always, if you want to become a patron, you can for as little as a dollar a month. We're up to $85 right now. And considering that I had such modest goals for that originally, it blows my mind that it's up at that point. Hopefully next time when I do the show, I can tell you that... uh, The podcast has found a home where you can download it regularly. Also, too, I'll be sure to link in the description all the places you can find Jason if you want to find Jason. So until next time, everyone, that will do it for me and the show. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.